Fusion just dropped a new release today. There's a couple big new features and I wanted to give you a quick look at the new nesting tool and manufacturing model that everyone has access to right now. If you've ever done any kind of multi-part nesting for cam, you know it's a pain in the butt to do manually. There are some plugins, but they don't always work right. Wouldn't it be great if there was another solution built into Fusion? Starting today, there's a new preview feature that lets you optimally nest your parts called a range. There's also a new feature called manufacturing model that's necessary to use a range and that came out as a public preview today as well. Let me explain how to get these features and how they work. So what is this new arrange feature? Well, you've probably known that a full blown nesting workspace is coming to Fusion 360. It's in private beta and I'm told it's pretty awesome. It's not ready yet, but the Fusion team did everyone a solid and gave us the Arrange feature as an appetizer. Arrange will let you take geometry and nest them optimally within a boundary or on a plane with a set length and width. Did you catch that? This is built-in nesting to Fusion 360 and it's parametric friendly. You make a design change, your Arrange updates without issue. Let me show you some examples here. Here we have our logo. We're going to quickly do an Arrange example here. So I just quickly select all the objects. You can see they're selected there. We're gonna select a sketch that I've already made and selecting in the inside, you automatically drop in all the parts. So you can change the border or the spacing or in this example, I had a bunch of, let's say exclusion areas and whenever I update where those are, the arrange feature automatically re-nests. And obviously sometimes it doesn't work and it won't let you do that, but it's really quite effective at updating on the fly. That's one quick way to use the Arrange tool. I'll go into a little more depth in another example, but first let's talk about the manufacturing model. The new manufacturing model is the future of how the manufacturing space will work. If you've ever used the simulation workspace before, you know you can modify your models in the simulation workspace without changing the design in other workspaces. This is the same intent behind the manufacturing model. Previous workflow that everybody's used to is called the working model. This change is the precursor to allowing features that only affect the manufacturing side of your projects, QA range and the upcoming Nest extension. Once you've turned on the preview for a range and the manufacturing model, you'll be able to use them both right away. Let me walk you through how to do that right now. You need to update to the latest version of Fusion first. If you don't see the update notification flag in the upper right corner, the best way to get that is to close and reopen Fusion. I recently learned that Fusion typically only checks for updates when it starts up. If you notice strange things like your cloud rendering materials aren't showing up or dimensions aren't working, there's likely an update pending in the background and you just have to restart Fusion. Anyway, the first step is to update Fusion 360, like I said. Once you get Fusion updated, you wanna to go to the upper right of Fusion and click on your profile image and then select preferences. On the left of the new window, click preview features and then click in the box and search for Arrange. You want to turn on the checkbox for Arrange and Manufacturing Working Model. All right, you've got that set up. If you don't see Manufacturing Model on the browser in the Manufacturing Workspace, try restarting Fusion 360 after turning on the previews. That worked for me. All right, so now you see Manufacturing Model on the left. Let me take you through an example. I'm gonna open up this cabinet model we've used in a past video. I'll put a card to that video here. All right, we're in the manufacturing space. We need to right click to make a manufacturing model on manufacturing models. So that created that and you can see right above here, this node will go away in the future. It's called the working model and it'll be replaced by the manufacturing model in the manufacturing space. So to edit the manufacturing model, you right click, click edit manufacturing model. And now we're in the edit manufacturing model space, I guess you would call it. You see a new series of things in the modify area, specifically remove features, remove faces, replace with primitives, and some kind of common things. Arrange is hidden all the way down here. I'm gonna make it on my toolbar by pinning it. So now it's up here. You can tell that's kind of something similar to a nesting icon. So to get into Arrange, you can just click it and quickly arrange items on a plane or sketch for manufacturing is the tool tip. As I showed before, you can just drag a window left to right and everything in that window will be selected. So you can see it over here on the left. And then you can select a plane or sketch 
which I just use this plane back here. And I need to give it a box. So I think I did 100 by 100. And that will throw that into a 100 by 100 box. And you can notice that it's done a really good job at selecting all of the dados that I need to cut, and those are facing up. But if that didn't work, you can go back in and flip each one of these things. Flip that one over. I can change the border spacing here to the edge of the material that I've said that 100 by 100. So if I want to make it one inch, it may fail here. Nope, that worked. Uh, this would be like your spacing of your tool. So right now it's at three quarter. Say we want to do something more like a quarter, bring those parts tighter. And that's perfectly fine. So that's the really quick way to just get in there and get it done. Then we would finish. We'd be back to our normal manufacturing space and you can then create a setup and Something different here is it will ask you if you want to use the manufacturing model instead of default. And I think that's going to turn into something that's normal coming in the future here. But if I say OK, it's going to use all solids inside the manufacturing model. And I want to ignore that warning. So I've got my setup and I can just go right along. What's cool about this is say I've selected everything and I go and make some parametric changes back here. If I open up my parameters, I don't want to make this actually 48 inches wide. We have some issues for some reason. If I go back to manufacture, it should have updated everything here to fit back on that, that layout again. And you can see my top and bottom pieces are way smaller now and it's fit everything back on there. So this is obviously super powerful. You can't do everything with, with a range. It does not allow you to arrange in a certain orientation. It just does it the most efficiently. So things like grain in your material aren't gonna really be something you can choose. But that said, you can edit the manufacturing model and simply just move things around if you didn't like that orientation. So it gives you a good starting place and then you can make your own changes from there. The other easy way to do this is like this logo example where we click a range and we've already pre-drawn a sketch. So we've selected all our objects. So that could be like a piece of plywood, obviously, 48 by 96, or exactly what you need it to be by just using a sketch. I'd argue that this is a more powerful feature than most nesting software will allow you. It's obviously very simple, but it's very powerful in that it's just automated within Fusion and it can automatically update to a live sketch, which is really cool. So to start over here from this cabinet model, if I want to edit the manufacturing model again, I can actually remove some of these features. So I, there's a fillet on these corners and that's not really very useful for manufacturing. It's good for renderings and maybe some drawings, but most of the time you don't want those fillets. Uh, it's not a good way to set up cam. So one of the new features is remove features in the modify area of the edit manufacturing model. And you can select a bodies and it's gonna find all these features that can be removed. So part of the options are remove holes. If we wanted to get rid of all the holes, which is pretty cool, you could find all the fillets, the chamfers, extrudes, revolves. So it's finding all of the fillets for us. I'm not sure why it's finding, not finding those, but the rest of these are being found. And if I say delete, we've now gotten rid of the fillets on, I believe most of these, maybe, yeah, this one's not working for some reason, but beta features, right? So it got rid of all those fillets, which is super nice. And actually, maybe I want to get rid of all the holes too, because we're not going to drill those and they're complicating things. So I'm going to delete those holes on those two objects. Now when I finish this, I'm going to have exactly what I just saw in that edit manufacturing model. And we are just in our normal manufacturing space. But if I go back to design, we still have our fillets. If I go to rendering, we still have those fillets and I can start rendering that right there without worrying whether or not I've messed up my design model. I think this is a pretty sweet way to go. And I think this is the power of the manufacturing model that it is separate than the other node, which is going to go away, which is the working model. So that's just literally streaming in what's coming from design. Whereas manufacturing model lets you make changes inside of the manufacturing space that only affect that area. So that's the preview of the Arrange Manufacturing Model preview features. I thought you guys might like that right away. Go try it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Keep in mind, these are both beta features. So 
warning, warning, if you're using a production model, it shouldn't ruin anything, but it also may cause complications. Just be careful. They're pretty fun to use though. That's all for today. If you wanna support us, go to CNC Money, which is a website. It's actually a website. CNC.money will get you to our Patreon. You can support us there and get all of our CAD models and other features. Thanks. Thanks.